Mr. President, my Lord, ladies um, and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here this evening. I'm something of a Cambridge Union tart, but when it comes to the Oxford Union, I'm very much a virgin, so please be gentle with me here this evening. But I am particularly delighted to be here with my old friend and champion of refugees you've just heard from, Alf Dubbs. I've had the pleasure of joining on visits to refugee camps in Jordan on parliamentary assemblies in the United uh, Nations, often on the same side, despite our political uh, differences. And more than once, I've been a signatory in immigration legislation of the so-called and famous Dubs Amendments. So we may share similar sentiments and similar aims on the subject up for debate this evening, but we are here to debate and vote on a specific motion, which I contend represents a very high bar. And on that point, there's something of a steward's inquiry here, Mr. President, because the motion that I was sent in inviting me to appear to debate this evening read that this House believes that the government is engineering a panic around refugees. Mysteriously, that motion has changed on this evening's uh, order paper. Whether that is a tactic of debating in the uh, Oxford uh, Union to try and put off those speakers on a certain side of the argument, I don't know. I'm a simple jobbing MP, Mr. President, and I want to talk to the motion. So every time I mention panic, it will be panic slash crisis. And it slightly confused me when every one of the speakers from the opposite uh, side in pro proposing uh, this motion, not a single one of them mentioned the word panic. And I've only just discovered why when I read the order paper. But we will carry on all the same. Now, I have been quite vociferous in calling out certain aspects of government policy on immigration my government's policy on immigration, perhaps most notoriously as has been mentioned uh, in the Home Affairs Select Committee last November when I dabbled in a bit of role play with the Home Secretary, asking her as a 16-year-old orphan escaping a conflict zone from an African country with a lone relative legally in the United Kingdom how I could safely and legally come to the UK. Now, the exchange that followed resulting in the Home Secretary deferring to the pretty hopeless permanent secretary sitting to her right, could be construed by some as instilling panic on the part of Suella Braverman. That is not the government or Home Secretary engineering a panic slash crisis. Uh, in, uh, uh, it is an RC prima donna backbench MP inflicting panic slope crisis on the Home Secretary. And that's not what the motion says. There are certainly, however, plenty of areas of immigration policy where I think government policy could be found lacking and legitimately attract this House's uh, disapprobium. Presiding over a chaotic backlog of asylum applications with still some 138,000 outstanding applications, taking an average of more than 360 days to process, and a lack of urgency in recruiting sufficient additional caseworkers to speed things up. Promising to take back control of our nation's borders as part of a post-Brexit to-do list, whilst apparently being powerless to deter the 45,755 people who accessed the UK by small boats across the Channel last year. The government's failure to articulate and provide genuine, safe and legal routes for genuine asylum seekers, particularly those with links to the UK. Until, that is, I persuaded the government just two weeks ago to amend the Illegal Migration Bill with the new Clause 59 to that effect, which went through the Commons, and now the baton will be picked up in the Lords by Lord Dubbs and his colleagues. The failure of the government to secure more returns agreements with other countries so that those whose asylum claims have been rejected can be swiftly removed, and even where we do have agreements with countries like Albania, for example, only 1,000 of the 13,000 uh, Albanian, mostly Albanian young men who came across the channel last year have actually been returned last year. And certainly the government have caused something of a kerfuffle about subsidizing the French police force to the tune of a further 500 million pounds, only for them to intercept more migrants on French beaches, but then only to let them go after destroying their dinghies, leaving them free to try their luck again the following night, and then the following night, and so on, until one night they get lucky and cross into British territorial waters. 
But certainly we should not underestimate the problem we face. And there are reasons for concerns. And if I cite a higher authority, I must also address the misconception that the government is engineering a panic stroke a crisis around refugees. I do not believe that this is the case. The fact is there are genuine concerns about the impact of uncontrolled and illegal migration, and it is the duty of any responsible government to address these concerns. That higher authority is Chat GBP, who I asked to write this speech, and that's the only bit of it that I found usable. 6,000 migrants so far have come across the channel, and it's on course to exceed the record numbers uh, last um, year. And incredibly, the numbers of those who have tragically lost their lives uh, in the channel is still very uh, low, and it's a miracle that more lives have not been lost, and also a testimony to the professionalism of our border force, our coast guards, and our lifeboat uh, men and women as well. And on top of that, 500,000, a net flow of 500,000 migrants who came here legally uh, last year and who are very uh, welcome, but where also we are seeing a shortage of accommodation where we're now paying six to seven million pounds a day for housing asylum seekers in hotels, inappropriately in many cases, particularly those uh, with small children, including now still 9,000 Afghan citizens who were legally brought here in the airlift uh, from Kabul back in the summer of 2021, still in hotels, and the big knock-on impact that's having uh, in certain um, communities. And there are many migrants who have had their claims rejected remaining here indefinitely if they cannot be returned to their home country, whilst others remain in limbo, unable to work, as we've heard in uh, many cases, or contribute whilst their claims just take too long to process. And all of the time, ruthless people smugglers profit from this misery as more come forward to replace the increasing numbers who are being intercepted. But in all of this, the real victims are those genuine asylum seekers who really do need our help, for whom we've had a proud record of giving a duty of care for safe haven in past um, years, being bumped by those who are effectively gaming our immigration system and our generous hospitality. So all of these are genuine concerns about an unsustainable immigration system which has been broken for some years, but is giving rise, um, but is it giving rise to panic slash crisis and indeed is engineering a panic slash crisis not counterproductive in trying to deal with it? Has the threshold of panicos, state crisis, been reached? Has the god Pan been suddenly awakened from his slumbers, giving rise to a great shout, causing his flocks to stampede? As Boris Johnson might have said, I think not. So, Mr. President, the motion fails at the first hurdle, I'm afraid. If this House had instead sought to castigate the government for the solutions it's pursuing to deal with these practical problems, the illegal migration bill about which we've heard so much, and yet it's nothing to do with the motion, the yet-to-take-off Rwanda scheme, then there may have been more merit. But this motion accuses the government of engineering a panic-stroke crisis. But there are three other areas, Mr. President, at least on which this motion is defective. It claims that the government is engineering a panic strash Crisis against refugees, i.e. people driven from their homes by war or the fear of attack or persecution, as your dictionary defines it. Yet all the government's rhetoric, all the measures taken by the Home Office, are focused on deterring those who do not have a credible asylum claim in the UK and the people smugglers they pay to convey them here and instead providing safe and legal routes for genuine refugees who we have a proud tradition of helping over many years. We've taken 500,000 people in that uh, description since 2015. The resettlement schemes, more Afghan citizens than any other European nation, potentially over a million people from Hong Kong, and not forgetting the major aid to refugee camps abroad, such as the Satiri camp in Jordan, which Alf and I have uh, visited in recent um, years. So thirdly, the motion promulgates more defective logic. What evidence is here there that engineering a panic stroke crisis benefits government anyway. And if it doesn't, why would any government do it? The perceived failure to take back control of our borders by such high levels of irregular immigration is a major negative for the government and risks being seen as further undermining its reputation for any competence. Politically, 
the government might do better keeping quiet about it rather than engineering a panic slash crisis. And certainly the disastrous local election results last week did not suggest that any such engineering would prove to be a vote winner. So why would the government want to engineer such an incompetent strategy? And finally, Mr. President, the motion assumes a high level of government competence in being able to engineer any sort of panic stroke confidence in the first place. So, Mr. President, I urge members of this esteemed but slightly curious body to reject this motion today simply by the use of basic logic and asking who benefits. And if you cannot clearly identify the beneficiary, why would any government, this or other, uh, do it? Certainly, that's the sort of logic we would exercise in the Cambridge Union, and I expect no less from this other place. And you can do that. You can vote with this uh, side, as we've heard, without in any way diminishing your condemnation of this government's immigration policy, its proposed contentious legislation or deportation schemes, which have yet literally to get off the ground. And you don't even have to like Suella Braverman in order to oppose this motion. It's questionable whether the government could engineer a panic stroke crisis even if it wanted to. It doesn't. It doesn't benefit from one. And so I urge members to vote down this misguided motion. Thank you.